What's up, coach? In today's video, we're talking with Sarah Furman, owner of You Can Row To, all about how to use rowing to increase your fitness business. Are you ready? Let's get started. What's up, coach? I'm Beverly Simpson, owner of B Simpson Fitness and the founder of the PT Profit Podcast and the PT Profit Formula. I'm super pumped for today's video because we are running the interview that we did for the podcast with Sarah Furman, owner of You Can Row Too. And we talk all about how we can use rowing in your fitness business to increase your skills so that you can increase your revenue inside your business. And rowing, in my opinion, and in our opinion, which you'll hear on this episode, is one of the most underutilized tools. And I get why, because not everyone has access to the equipment, but in this episode, we talk about how that's changing and how you as a fitness professional can get ahead of the curve. So if you like this video, be sure to hit like, hit subscribe, and tap that bell so that you can be notified for when the next video comes out. So without further ado, let's go ahead and roll that interview. Well, hi, Sarah. Thanks so much for joining me on the show today. How are you? I am great, Beverly. I'm so excited to be here because I've been listening to the podcast. And honestly, I subscribed right away because you're my friend, but I am listening to all the episodes because they're just so awesome. I'm not going to lie. It's awesome. I love it. That's so sweet. I did not even prompt her to say that. Thank you. Yeah, so much. Totally. We didn't talk about it at all, but it's true. I really appreciate that. Well, I'm really excited for today's episode. I think this is going to be really insightful for a lot of the trainers and physical therapists that listen. So can you just dive in, tell us a little bit about who you are and who you serve? All right. Well, my name is Sarah Furman, and I am the owner of a company called You Can Row Too. And what we do is we help people of all ages, shapes, sizes, abilities, um, income levels, and all the rest of it uh, to get fit on the rowing machine, to find their inner athlete, unleash that person, and to take that from wherever they are to wherever they want to go with it. And with that is a very big um, element of our certified instructors who are basically our, um, what do you call them, our, our soldiers out in the field who are helping spread our message of really good rowing um, and helping people really be successful with it. And now rowing specifically, you're talking about on the machine, right? Or yes. Like, yeah. Yes, absolutely. Talking about the rowing machine, not on water rowing. A lot of us are on water rowers, but this is really about, um, well, it used to be mostly about the gym environment. Now, thanks to COVID and, and the shutdown and everything, it's really a lot also too about taking that online and into people's homes. We've actually had a lot of our trainers get business over the course of the shutdown just because um, they were able to take their classes online. They found personal training clients online. Um, there was a huge sale on um, rowing machines the minute the shutdown happened. And in fact, Concept2, which is the company that we're most closely affiliated with, they ran out of equipment. They're back ordered eight weeks. And so all these people who have machines at home now need people to help them learn how to use them and actually get benefit from them. So it's pretty great. That's awesome. So I know we're going to definitely get into that today, but I'm curious. Mm -hmm you to rowing how'd you get into rowing and how'd you get into you can row too oh it's a kind of a it's an interesting story i am not your typical um like i'm not the story of our master instructors who are all these uh huge veterans of the sport of most of them come from on water rowing they've been doing it for decades i came in the way i think most regular people do which is i well, not this part, because I moved to the middle of nowhere in Michigan, and that's kind of how I got here, but not that part. But the part of walking into the door of a gym and getting hooked into um, working out and rowing, in the, in, because the owner of the gym, who later became my business partner, was a huge fan of it. So she ran a challenge every year, and I got pulled into that challenge, and um, I got hooked basically is what it comes down to. And the funny thing about it is, even though what You Can Row 2 does is primarily, our, our primary thing is certifying into rowing instructors um, and trainers and people like that to teach rowing. 
um, I got pulled into the facility because it was a certified spin facility. And I'm not a spinner, I never have been, but I figured if they were a certified spin facility, then probably I could be, I would be safe there and they wouldn't kill me. And that was, I'm not kidding, that was literally something I was worried about. I was worried that I was gonna get hurt. And I figured if they were certified in spin, then it would probably be okay. Vote for getting certified. <laughs> Definitely going to talk about that too, because I know that you and I have really we share that, and I think that a lot of the listeners here they are smart trainers. They can't, they are passionate about the science of training and care about getting better at their craft and being able to bring you know cutting edge information to their clients. Absolutely. So, I, I told, I get that we're definitely on the same page, which is probably why we connected in our first mastermind. Just we were yes. passionate about you know studying in the science of training so absolutely absolutely and i think in for my um a lot of the people who come to rowing are a little bit older um <clears throat> excuse me my business partner used to say they've lived a life um we get a lot of people who come to us from running for example their knees are blown out they can't do it anymore they still want that high intensity workout um they want something super efficient but they can't run anymore so rowing is an obvious um next step, let's say. And, you know, um, people really want to know, I feel like, um, who they can trust in fitness. They want to know that they can trust their trainer. And, and, you know, we get a lot of younger people coming into this too. And I, they all say, well, how do I establish credibility? And I say, well, one way is um, get certified, not just as, not just an indoor rowing, but get a personal training certification, get a group fitness certification, get something that will give you a base level of knowledge. Because for example, like I say, to work with our audience, which is primarily people 40 plus, let's say, which parenthetically is a great audience to be working with now, because these are people who are going to want that community still. Um, to work with them, you really need to have a good base level of knowledge to know how you're going to train them because <laughs> like Roseanne Rosanna Dana used to say it's always something there's there's you know they were out riding their bike over the weekend and they tweaked their hamstring or something you know they were shoveling snow they threw out their back okay that's a problem we have in the upper peninsula not, a, not everybody's got that problem but the older we get the more prone we are to getting all kinds of odd injuries that just pop in that are unexpected. And let me tell you, it takes forever to heal from them. I remember back when I was like 20 and I was completely fine the next day. It doesn't work that way anymore. So, you know, as trainers, we need to have a really big toolkit of adjustments that we can make on the fly um, to help people be their best and do their best. And most importantly, not get hurt during, uh, during a workout. And I really feel like, that toolbox that you get from doing that bigger certification, that personal training certification, group X, and in our case, the rowing certification is super important. I 100%. So there are a couple of places that I definitely want to go and we'll start here first because one of the things that you said was that you went to rowing because you were looking for that high intensity feeling of working out without having the impact. And as someone who was tra training and coaching a lot of moms, both in person and also, mm -hmm. also online, I was looking for that as well, because a lot of people are looking for that high intensity. And that's what actually ultimately drew me to kettlebells. So yeah. I am very curious. I'd love to hear a little bit more about your thoughts behind using the rowing machine really at any age and for that intensity level and what are some of the common myths that trainers and clients believe when they look to the rowing machine? So um, that's an awesome question and I, I love hearing that you love kettlebells because I do too and actually um, I would say one of the common myths that I see all the time is that well, the big, probably the biggest one is that rowing is boring, that all you're doing is sitting down on the machine and you're just slogging back and forth, pulling on the handle, push pulling, and all you do is take stroke after stroke after stroke. And honestly, if you're using the rowing machine that way, you're doing it wrong because um, that's just one facet of it. Can you do, can you sit down and row for an hour or more? Yes, absolutely. I've done a 24 hour row. I've done a um, hundred thousand meters in a day, which is, like eight or nine hours of rowing. I mean, I've done things where I'm doing that a lot, but what I really do now 
is, and I'm going to plug my book for a second. Um, we do, we, what we're most known for at You Can Row too, actually, is these interval workouts, right? Where you're on and off the machine and you do a minute or two or three of rowing, maybe a little bit more, but more like in that range. And then you get off and you do something else. Kettlebells are absolutely perfect. I love, you know, kettlebell swings and stuff like that in between a rowing interval. That kills that, um, that feeling that rowing is boring. It also um, is a great way to get people on the machine to try it. And I know I've talked to a lot of trainers who, are, who say, you know, the machine's just sitting over there in the corner. Number one, I don't really know how to use it. Number two, I can't necessarily figure out how to get my client's results. And I feel like Two ways to do that, and I know I'm getting off the question a little bit, sorry, I'll come back. Um, but uh, one of the things to do is just start with a warm up on the rowing machine, a warm up or a cool down, and then go do your other thing. But, but um, then, you know, if, if clients are resistant or even if the trainer's resistant, getting somebody on the machine for a minute or two, they'll do anything for a minute or two. And you can literally say to them, it's only a minute, you can do it. And then the fun thing is they find that they get on it and if you can get them rowing well enough, right, to where their, their technique is, is pretty good at least, right, and they're getting results, then they find that it's a lot of fun because the thing that's amazing about the rowing machine, and for me, it was a, um, you know, it was sort of a weight loss epiphany. I got on it, I got sucked into that challenge, like I said, and then I started rowing a lot. I got into the community of it, and all of a sudden, all this weight that I had been trying to lose for the longest time just started to melt away. And I think it was the total body aspect of it. I mean, you know, rowing works 85% of your muscles on every single stroke. It's incredibly efficient. Um, but also the fact that I wasn't pounding my knees the way I did on the treadmill. And so I could row for a while and get off and be fine. Um, other myths that it's impossible to learn. And um, I will, I'm not going to lie, the technique is not, the, the basics of the technique, technique are super simple and easy to get your arms around. That last piece, getting really, really good, is something that we as rowers work on for our entire lives. And I actually think that's, I, I don't think that's unlike kettlebells, right? There's always a little tweak you can make. You can always get a little bit better. You can always help somebody get a little bit better. And I think that's one of the great things about it. You're never really done. It's like golf. Um, you know, we're always trying to get, pursue that perfect stroke. We never quite get there, or we might have like one, and then the next one is trash, right? So um, it's, I think it's fun to have that constant challenge of something you can always work on. And I think it's fun for us as trainers to have that to give our clients as well. So it's really interesting that you actually bring that up as a myth, because I feel like, and this is totally my interpretation and opinion, so feel free to, you know, disagree, but I feel like it's the opposite in the sense that trainers think, oh, they just see someone rowing, and then all of a sudden they think they know how to do it, and they'll just put their oh. client on the rowing machine without mm -hmm. recognizing or realizing that there is actual technique that's involved and that it's more than just go warm up on the on the row machine for five minutes oh that's interesting yeah 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 so you certainly could just go sit down on the rowing machine for five minutes and do your thing but are, are you really going to get a decent workout out of that are you really going to make progress are you going to build strength and burn fat and stuff like that no so there is a lot involved in um, learning how to do it well so you get the maximum benefit out of it. And the thing that I always worry about is um, that people are going to get hurt because, all right, one thing, if, I, if your listeners take one thing away about rowing from this podcast, I want them to stop putting the damper at 10. Drop that damper down, put it between three and five, and you will find that people do a lot better and they, they don't get off saying their backs hurt. Or, um, you know, generally speaking, I don't know how this ever got started that people think that the higher the damper, the better it is. It's like gearing on a bike. It's not better to be at the highest level. It's often because you can't sustain it. And you are gonna, uh, you are more likely to get hurt if you are rowing at that higher level. It's just, um, just the way it is. Okay, it's okay. You were talking about, you know, the common myth that trainers think that they can just see someone, like the technique behind rowing and it feeling like them not, them not recognizing or realizing that there's actually technique behind there. 
Yeah, yeah. Okay. So if I'm a trainer, what I want to do is I want to learn how to help people be the best at this so that they can get the best results so that they'll, and honestly, we want them to stay with us, right? So that we can set ourselves apart a little bit. I think that's pretty important right now um, as we're looking, the environment is increasingly competitive. We want to um, make our mark as the, the trainer who's a level above. Um, and so, yeah, it's absolutely worth investing a little time and figuring out how you can help your clients be really effective and successful with the running machine. Because the other thing about it is too, because it's total body, because it works 85% of your muscles on every stroke, it's super efficient. So five minutes on the rowing machine is going to do so much more for you and get, get you so much more ready for your workout than, you know, five minutes of walking on the treadmill will. It's so good. Such a good point. So do you find that trainers and also general population that they would struggle to find row machines in their gym? Because right now, you know, spin classes are pretty much available in all gyms across the country mm -hmm. in the United States. Do you feel, I feel like in my gym, there's no rowing class. So in order to get into the row on the row, you need to do it yourself. Is that, is that something that you, you see changing? I do. It's, it's growing really fast. Of course, it was growing faster before we all got shut down, but um, absolutely, there are studios popping up all over and not just the chains, you know, Row House and City Row and, and those companies, but um, I actually was just on the phone this weekend with a CrossFit box owner who's dropping that whole side of his business and he's focusing exclusively on rowing now because that's his members love it and that's what they want, so he's going to get more machines. Um, and really go all in with it. I think as gyms reopen, um, we are going to find that people are, or as they have reopened, um, depending on when you're listening to this, that rowing is going to be super popular. Also because um, for the next while, we are going to want sort of a self-contained um, workout situation, right? So you can have your one rowing machine that you use for the entire workout, and then your couple of dumbbells or your couple of kettlebells or resistance bands or whatever it is off to the side. And then you've got a whole training unit right there. You don't have to be, for example, moving around from machine to machine, which I think is gonna be challenging for quite a while. And you know, as we're recording this, it's challenging right now, and I think it will continue to be challenging over time at least at certain times. So it's really great to have this sort of self-contained unit that people can use um, and exercise safely. I think that's such a good point. And I definitely want to go here too, because I'd love to talk about how you can row too and how the rowing industry specifically is really moving through the impact of what this pandemic has done to the business and to gyms. Because I know that even though gyms are reopening across our nation, it doesn't necessarily mean that people are coming into the gym. Right. They don't, people don't necessarily yet feel safe to come into facility. I know for me, if my gym was open, I'd be there in two seconds, but I know that I'm also not like most people. Mm -hmm. So I'm curious as to, I'm curious, what do you think is going to happen? Like, what do you see the future being for the row, for rowing and for at home rowing users? So in my case, um, I teach a class of women who are all 60 plus. And um, back in March, our, uh, we have our classes at a university um, fitness center. Back in March, we shut down or they shut down for two weeks for a deep plane. <laughs> well, that we're not open yet. We're not open until at least August. Um, so what I did was I, I, right away, I had everybody walk out with a rowing machine. I let them have their pick of whatever dumbbell or kettlebell or whatever they wanted. They took them home. Um, and we went to online classes very quickly. Not I, uh, about half the class was all in for that uh, out of the gate. And I've been teaching my classes on Zoom three days a week. Haven't missed a beat. Haven't missed a day ever since that started. And so all of those people are, including me as the instructor, we're all really accustomed to it. We're um, used to it. I'm not going to lie. It is challenging. And we can talk about that in a second. But for the most part, everything has moved smoothly online. And 
now that we're beginning to talk about what it's going to be like going back, you know, the people who haven't been doing it on Zoom, I think are pretty excited to come back and get back into our workout space. But we already know our physical space is going to be limited. We're not going to be able to have the same number of people that we had in the class before. Um, and so some of those people have already volunteered to continue working out at home because they don't feel safe too. And because we're going to be in a university environment where, um, well, it's not that it's a university, it's, but it's a public environment, right? It's not like our little studio where people are going to be walking in and touching our equipment and we don't know, you know, we're not, we're not necessarily going to be in control of who's got their hands on it. Obviously we will all be disinfecting our stuff. Um, in our case, we'll all be doing it ourselves as we walk in, because in my case of knowing my class, they'll all feel better knowing that they can take their own wipe, wipe down their machine and know that it's been done and it's ready for them. Uh, other studios don't operate that way, I know. But anyway, um, it's going to be, I think from here out, I think what COVID has done is push something that was going to happen in the fitness industry anyway. It was already happening and this has just been a massive push forward. Um, what I'm telling people is, a what's going to be the thing going forward is in person and online it's not either or it's both and people are going to want to um have that opportunity to continue to be in the class when they either can't be there or don't want to be there when there isn't room for them in our case we're in northern michigan so we have a lot of snowbirds there's a great business opportunity here actually because it allows us to hold on to the people who leave for the winter Mm -hmm. And I think that's true. I know some people in Arizona, for example, where the opposite is true, right? Their, their members leave in the summer when it's hot um, mm -hmm. and they're able to hold on, hold on to them as well. They can still tune in for that 9 a.m. class and just do it virtually from home. That's so awesome. It, uh, it really is a great business opportunity if you choose to look at it this way, right? And for example, one of our master instructors is a personal trainer and she has um, gotten a couple of clients just over the course of the shutdown from people who've gone looking for, who have bought rowing machines, they're training at home, they, they're getting a little stuck and they need some help and she's just training them on Zoom. It's working pretty well. That's great. And so, you know, I'm curious, have you guys started thinking or talking about, cause you look at, you look at, at models like peloton right they've got the bike in there and they also have the treadmill is do you foresee something like that happening for rowing oh that it's our they already are coming out with a rowing machine they just there's it was postponed it was what i heard was it was supposed to happen in the first quarter of this year and it got put off but they also have they have a competitor called hydro that's very very similar um so yes that's absolutely happening and also um row house for example has a has an app called row house go that is at home workouts um some of the other bigger online app um you know, choose your workout kind of things, have rowing workouts in them. It's absolutely coming. I think it's coming for pretty much everything. And I think, um, fortunately, um, the online pie is enormous. And I think people don't need to feel put off by the fact that like, you know, so-and-so has already been out there for a long time and already has an enormous audience. And um, I haven't even started yet. And I don't even know what to do. And now what? I think it may... I think to some of us, it feels like we're really far down this road of online, but I think when we look back two years even, or and certainly five or 10 years, we're going to look back at this time and we're going to be like, oh my gosh, that was just everything in its infancy. And what I don't want trainers to do is get two years down the road or even a year or six months down the road and look back to today and go, oh, if I had only started then, instead of worrying that I was too late, where would I be now, right? Like there's still plenty of time for everything. Everything is still getting sorted out. Um, oops, and there's still plenty of time to, uh, you know, do it the way you want, find your audience and go after it, do it. <laughs> no, I love that. And I, and I definitely, it's a great segue because it's, I definitely want to talk about that because you actually had mentioned age a little bit earlier in our conversation, but it's funny because, you know, we, even when I think about my background as a musical theater performer, from the age of 16, I was already saying, I'm too late, I'm too late, I'm too late. And it's just this, this perpetual cycle that I think a lot of people get into when they look out into the market and they see that, you know, they compare them learning to walk to someone who's already running. 
right? If children, when they're learning how to walk, looked at it like that and thought, oh, my mom knows how to walk. I better not walk. Then we would all, <laughs> you know, my mom's running. We'd all, we'd all have a lot of, we wouldn't all get to where we are today. So I think that's a really important point. And to remember that you're, when your business is in its infancy, infancy, you can't compare yourself to someone who's been running for years. And that doesn't mean that you can't. And I a hundred percent agree that you're going to get into that, that, you know, you'll get into it and then, a, you know, a year, you'll look back a year from now and be like, oh man, I've learned and grown so much, right? And it's just an interesting cycle that I think many people get into where they just think I'm too late, I'm too late, I'm too late. Yeah, and, and I think people get into a cycle too of thinking I'm too late to work out. So what I like to tell people is, you know, just as you're just starting to move into um, online fitness, there's also the, there, there is, that's you on one side, right? And then on the other side, there's the person who's just, there's the client who's waiting for you because they're just starting to think about getting healthy. Like, you know, again, we're recording this right now while COVID is, is a really big deal. And, and there are plenty of people out there who are just beginning to think, oh man, I've neglected my health all these years. And now I am staring at the possibility of, you know, we all are, right? Of getting sick with something really, really serious. A lot of people are starting to get serious about their fitness. So it's very possible that as you're moving into your lane as a trainer, um, there's that your perfect client is also just beginning to think about, oh, I need to get serious about this. I need to get serious about my fitness. And so you guys are gonna come right together on the road, right? Your perfect person may just be getting started just like you are. And it's so, you're never too late and also, you're never, you know, what else are you going to do? Are you going to look behind you and say, well, there went that opportunity. I might, have, might as well just sit around and wait to die. I mean, you know, <laughs> I'm going to be uh, 58 next month, right? I'm certainly no spring chicken and definitely no spring chicken in fitness. But um, I am one of the people who came to it late. I have had a career as a journalist. I've worked in um, corporate public relations. I've done a ton of other things. Well, not late. I came to it later. I mean, I've been doing this for since I was in my 40s, so not that late. But, um, you know, that's the other thing, too, is in, I, get, I have conversations with a lot of people who are interested in getting into um, indoor rowing and then personal training and group exercise and stuff at a later age. And I say the same thing to them. You are not too late. And there's, you know, what is the point of looking behind? That's gone. And in any case, you need to get on it because, you know, for those of us who are probably on the second half of our lives versus the first half, it's true. The clock's ticking, but it's not ticking that fast. And your opportunity to make an impact is out there no matter what. And I think, um, I think that's the biggest thing. I think the more, and I'm guilty of this myself, I'm not going to lie. I have my days where I go, oh, it's really hard, which it is. Um, you know, some days I am feeling really overwhelmed and I really don't know quite what next step to take. And sometimes I just feel like, let's just bag it. But then I think about the person who's out there waiting for me. Like, like I said, that person who's maybe just starting on their journey or in, or in my case, that person who's, I don't know, 50 plus, let's say, who's feeling like they, they really want to, they really want to level up their fitness. They want to go into their, um, into their next decade feeling as strong and, and being as strong as they possibly can. You know, how that person is waiting for me to come and help them and they don't care how old I am, right? It's about the skill set that I have that I can use uniquely to help them uniquely. And that's really what it's all about. So true. I mean, your story just, it, it kind of brings up two things for me. And I actually was just talking about this on my Instagram the other day, which is, Jim Fortin, one of my mentors, says yeah. that is our greatest teacher. And, you know, we had lost someone in the Broadway community due to COVID. It was unexpected. And it just had this significant impact on me where I thought, you know, we're waiting. Mm -hmm. That moment of like, you don't need to be waiting. And on the flip side, so when someone gets that inclination of like, oh, yes, I'm ready. I'm going to go after it. On the flip side, they feel like, and I know that I've felt this intimately, is I'm too late. Yeah. I'm too late. 
wait, I can't, you know, I can't get started. And, and it's just, it's this like vicious cycle that I feel like we get into. And I, so I'm curious too, because you had brought this up that a lot of people that have come to you for, you know, that were interested in rowing, you said that they were typically people that were over 40. And so I'm interested when you look out in the industry now, and I think, I think specifically, and this is just my opinion, but I think what happens is that it looks like when you're looking at social media that, oh, fitness is a, you know, young industry and all the trainers that are good are like in their twenties. And I know for me, when I was working with trainers a lot, they'd be like, I don't want to be 40 and I don't want to be personal training at 40. Right. And you Um, think you're going to be 40 unless you're not around. So (laughs) yeah, you think about it. Get over it. Hi. Yeah, you know, you, you think, and I think that part of that just comes that we're just so used to looking at social media and thinking, oh, it's a young person, and I put young in quotations for those who are listening, young person's game, but I, it's not really a matter of age, it's just that's the demographic that's hanging out on Instagram right now, like, that's really what's happening, and it has nothing yep. to do with age specifically, I think is just, that's who's hanging out on Instagram. So what would you say to someone who's, you know, perhaps in, you know, where we were when we decided that we were going to jump into this? Like, what would you say to them for, you know, their fears about their age and fitness, both, both like getting fit and also, you know, leading? Right, right. So the the first thing I would say, um, back to our certification discussion, actually, is, you know, if you're afraid that you don't have enough credibility to get into the business, you don't have enough credibility to be able to teach this stuff. That's one of the reasons I recommend getting a certification, because it gives you a toolbox to work with, number one. And number two, it gives you some credibility. If you don't feel like you have the credibility um, based on your other experience or whatever it is, then be able to say, I'm a certified personal trainer. I'm a certified rowing instructor. It matters. It matters to um, your potential customers because really what is the biggest fear? And Beverly, feel free to disagree with me. But um, what I see is the biggest fear among people who are out there. um, Well, there are two actually. The biggest fear among people who are out there looking for um, fitness and to get to work out and and whatever their fitness goals are, their biggest fear is they're going to get hurt. Um, that they're going to overdo it, that they're going to do something wrong, that um, they're going to get some kind of injury that they can't come back from or that's going to set them back. Um, That's number one. The second thing I think people are afraid of is failure. They're afraid that it won't work. They won't lose the weight. They won't get the PR. They won't have the body they want, whatever that looks like. They won't be able to do the hike that they have planned. Or, you know, in some of my, in the case of um, some of my clients, it's they won't be able to like get down on the floor and play with their grandchildren and get back up again on a regular basis, you know, just little things like that. Um, In both cases, I think getting some knowledge underneath you that will give you that confidence and that toolbox, both of those things is super important. Um, and then the other thing is, um, what I always tell people, like, if you're feeling really overwhelmed or if you're feeling like you can't do it, you know, if it's, it's, it's too much for me, I, you know, I don't know enough. I'm not good enough. All these things that we're so good at saying to ourselves, right? Those are all internally focused. And I think the minute you, the the way to pop out of that is to say, is to stop looking in also stop looking forward and backward because that's the other thing that's happening when you're saying that to yourself. You're either looking back at how many years have gone by that I haven't worked out or that I haven't gotten into fitness, right? Or you're looking ahead and you're saying, you know, I only have another whatever, 20, 30, 40 good years left in me or something and somehow viewing that as being a short amount of time. Um, all those, those negative feelings come from not being present in the moment and from looking around too much, because we haven't talked about a comparison trap yet, but that's the other thing. If you're looking around and you're looking at, you know, Joe Trainer over here, who's got a 50,000 um, 50, subscriber following on YouTube and is reportedly racking up millions of dollars a year in revenue, by the way, you don't know that unless you've actually seen their tax return. Let's be clear about that. But anyway, if you're looking at other people and you're feeling less than as a result, it's because, again, you're looking in the wrong place. You need to stay right here, focused on who you are, what you do, and how you can help. Um, And that takes all of that away. 
forget about age. There is somebody out there right now who is looking for somebody who is 50 plus, for example, who understands who they are and the struggles they've gone through um, to help them meet their goals. There is somebody out there who is looking for a trainer who has had five pregnancies and will understand what they're trying, their, their struggle in trying to get their body back after all those babies. There is someone out there who is looking for a menopausal trainer who understands the difficulties of weight loss and menopause. I certainly do. It's hard. Um, and they, they want that person who can empathize, right? That's what we're looking for. We're looking for somebody we can really connect with who's going to give us the program we need. But let's be honest, that program is out there. The, you know, it's not rocket science. The program that will work, you could go out and buy it right now online. That's not really what you're looking for, I don't think, in a trainer or a Group X instructor. You're looking for somebody to partner with you who really understands your situation, understands your struggles, and will connect with you in a way that will help you un help you feel supported to move forward and hit those goals. Does that make sense to you? Do you? I don't know if you resonate with that at all. I do agree. That was that was just so good. You had so many amazing nuggets in there. Like I really like that was just really was really good, and it's so true. You know, I want to also just ask. I'm curious because you you did say this, and I know that I've been saying that I'm going to get back to this, but here I am, finally got it full circle, which is <laughs> like, what causes people to get into rowing later? Um, well, for one thing, just it's getting a lot more visibility now. So it's more on their radar screen. It's not that, um, you know, it, it has been that those one or two maybe machines that are kind of over in a corner of the gym floor and you, you know, like, you know, like you don't really know how to use it, right? Um, you don't really know what it's for. Uh, there's nobody to really show you how to use it, which is, that's the mission that I'm on is to get, for example, I want all those trainers who are out there walking the gym floor, helping, just doing that general, helping people, you know, work, building up their own businesses. I want them to all know how to use the rowing machine well, because it's transformative. And I think um, the, you know, there are these articles coming out now of talking about how rowing is the new spinning that that's been out there for a while, but it's really happening now in a much more concrete way. And interestingly, I'm starting to see rowing in places where it's not even um, like commercials and things like that. You just randomly will see somebody rowing as part of a commercial that has nothing to do with any fitness product or anything else. It's just kind of out there. So it's definitely gaining some visibility. Um, our population is aging and, um, you know, boomers are, boomers and um, Gen X are, we're all reaching that 50-ish age or older where we're looking for something that's lower impact. Um, and so there's that. I think it's a, I think it's a combination of things. I'd like to think that after one of my um, 11 years in this business, I'm in my 11th year of this business, I'd like to think that maybe all the work that we've been doing and you know, Concept2 and everybody else in the rowing world has been doing to just kind of get the word out about it is finally starting to hit at some like, you know, some level in the ether where it's just kind of out there as a fitness option. But again, I think it's I think it's partly that that the fact of us just getting older and looking for something that's a little easier on the body, but also maintains that high intensity that you, that a lot of people want. And and I should say too, um, we talk a lot about high intensity in rowing, especially with CrossFit. CrossFit had a lot to do with the popularization of rowing. It's a lot about these high intensity workouts, but. The thing I, one of the things I love about it actually is that it is also, it also can be a very Zen experience, very low impact. So um, we have a trainer who is a cancer recovery specialist and she uses it with her cancer clients just as a way to de-stress. And she calls it taking your, taking your rowing machine for a walk. It's a very Zen thing where you can um, zero in on the sound of the flywheel or watch the meters ticking by on the monitor and just kind of get out of your head for a while and just do something that just feels good. And you know, I feel like that's something that's kind of getting lost in fitness lately is everybody's been so focused on everything's got to be hard. Everything's got to be high intensity. Everything's just push, push, push. But we are living in a world right now that is pushing back so hard. I feel like we have to remember that fitness, our workout, 
whatever we're doing, movement is also an opportunity to just get back to ourselves, to de-stress, to release all of that. And um, the Roy machine is a really great place to do that because it's there and ready whenever you are. I think that you bring up such a huge, com you bring up such a huge point that so many people miss is that it's stress management. And that oh so many people are often like, not that stress is not important, it is, but you need to have the other side of it in order yes. to, like the work is in the rest. Yes, 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 absolutely, absolutely. And, the, and I think we don't, we're not taking into account enough too that given the environment and how stressful our general environment is outside of the gym, that's playing into our ability to put in a good workout too. And so, you know, if we're not sleeping, if we're, if we're sort of living in a state of high anxiety, our workouts may not, we may not be able to put in this massive weight moving, you know, heart pounding kind of thing. And that might, might not even be the right thing to do. I actually um, just put up on my Instagram yesterday a thing about overtraining. I think we have to be really, really careful about that because I think we're all kind of predisposed right now to, like I say, this sort of state of high anxiety and the risks of that. Like, you know, it's just a lot easier to get injured if you're living in that kind of a constant state. And I think we just, we need to be careful about that and we need to be thinking about our self care balancing our workouts and taking all of that into consideration um, and not expecting ourselves to be necessarily the people we were before our general environment got really hard and be okay with that. It's all right. You know, you bring something up about that rowing machine that I had never taken into consideration or really thought about before, which is the fact that I've always associated the row machine as something to intensify my workouts. Mm -hmm. It's something that I use to, you know, make it hard without impact, which is an important part of a working out, but I never had really considered that the row machine could be something that would activate my parasympathetic nervous system. 100%. Be you know because you I always associate walking. Oh, you just need to walk, and that's going to do that. But the, you could actually accomplish the same thing on the row machine. Hundred percent, and especially because it. I always like to say it meets you where you are and takes you as far as you want to go. Because it's an ergometer, it's totally powered by you, right? How it, it responds to how hard you push and pull. So you can push and pull very lightly, and it will just feel like like a walk, it'll feel like, um, like, you know, an easy, you know, like bobbing around in a swimming pool or something like that, something very relaxing. Um, if you want more intensity, it's easy to adjust it to that. But I don't think people give it the credit that it deserves for being something that can actually just, just hit that off button for you too. There's actually a, there's a, a trainer in um, Michigan who has a thing he calls Zen Row, where he does for anybody who, who does row, it's 12 strokes a minute, which is insanely slow. He does it with like yoga spa music behind, and he does it with one foot on the floor. So it's nothing to do with sweating, nothing. But it's all about, like you said, parasympathetic response and just chilling out. And, um, you know, how do, I, how do I just get my everything back to center? It's really, really cool. That's cool. I never had even thought about that. And I, and I was trying to think as you were talking, like, what are some of the other machines out there that would do that? And I guess like, sure, you got the dread yes. impact, right? And mm -hmm. sure, you could do the bike, but the bike isn't you know, and I'm sure that I got some spinners on here that might be like, that's not true, but it does, it's not a total body experience in the no. same way as a row machine or a treadmill. And it's, it, frankly, it hurts me when I sit on the bike. So it's not one of my favorite things. <laughs> <laughs> so that, that's really, you know, such a good point. So I definitely want to be mindful of your time. So I'm going to leave you with, you know, full circle, full circle question here. Bring on back. Yeah, which is, you know, what would you say? I feel like a lot of trainers think, you know, oh, I, I can do it. I, I, I know that I'll set the damper down. Like, I'll know, I know how to do that. What would you say to a trainer that, that was maybe on the fence or wasn't sure if they should get certified? Well, I, I mean, I guess I would just direct them to um, all the, the things that we've had trainers say back to us about what it's like to get certified and take the training. They, they say that it has, well, for one thing, 
they say they're making more money after being certified because they are now listed in a directory of certified rowing instructors and they get people coming to them specifically for rowing. And then they're able to work that into other personal training packages. So it's not like they, they're just the rowing instructor, but it is something that people are out there looking for right now. And like I said, they, people know that they don't want to get hurt. They know that, um, that, or they feel like rowing technique is daunting. And so they want to be sure they're doing it well, or they've tried it. I've see, I see this literally every day. They've tried it and they're, you know, they say my back hurts. I can't get my, my times where I want them. I'm not, you know, I'm it's some way or another. I'm not where I want to be. I need help. Right. So, um, I would say that you, you really want to learn how to do it well. Um, and you want to have that good housekeeping seal of approval, right, of being a certified trainer. But the biggest thing is, as trainers, what do we want? We really want people to get results. We want people to be successful. And the way to be successful is to really, really take a deep dive and um, learn how to do it from the pros. Could you acquire all of that knowledge over time by watching a million YouTube videos? Yes, but here's the problem. How do you know which YouTube video is good? There are 100 billion million it's a real number, I just made it up. Um, videos out there on fitness, on rowing, on, you, on online. There's all this stuff. There's too much stuff. You cannot know what's really good and, and what you can trust, what you as a trainer can trust to teach you to teach other people um, just based on what you see online. So I highly recommend, same for personal training, exact same for personal training. Go to a reputable organization that is approved by a bigger one, like, you know, for example, we have um, ACE, we give ACECs with our certification. Um, go to one of those organizations that's already been checked out for you and just take the deep dive, go in, um, really take the time to learn, because here's the other thing. How many courses have you signed up for? And I don't mean just like certificate, fitness certifications, but courses of any kind and they're just sitting in your course graveyard, right? You got a couple modules in, you lost track, you got bored, you didn't finish them. Dedicate the time, like our, for example, our training is, we're offering it online now over two half days. Give us a weekend. We're gonna teach you everything you need to learn to actually go in on Monday and be a better trainer. For me, that's super appealing, whatever the training is. I wanna be efficient. With my time, I want to get it done, and I want to know. I want to know that I've learned how to do it right, because that'll just change the way I communicate about it to other people. I'll be a lot more authoritative. I'll have that air of confidence that people are looking for when they're looking for a trainer. That's so true, and you bring up a good point, right? And we, I know that we talk about it all the time, which is information is not implementation. No, it's not the same thing not at all. You know, how can you, you can't learn how to swim by reading a book on swimming. Your rubber, the rubber needs to meet the road. We talk, I say that a lot all the time. So, right, right. And we hear from our trainers all the time that they love in, for example, in our training, they get a chance, a chance to get coached by our master instructors who are the ultimate experts in the field. And they learn, not only do they learn how to teach, but they get their own technique corrected and they learn what they've been doing wrong. And frankly, pretty, you know, let's just say it, there's, there's a lot to get fixed usually in a rowing stroke, but there are little tweaks that once you know what they are, you immediately can make massive progress. And we love also passing that on to trainers so that they can do that with their clients. It's all about progress, incremental progress. It's so good. So where can my home users find you? Where can my trainers find you? Where the best place to learn more about You Can Row Too? You can find us at you can row two, U C A N R O W, and the number two everywhere, pretty much LinkedIn, Instagram, Facebook. That's our website, YouTube, all of it. Awesome. Still a little resistant on TikTok, but I'll probably follow up eventually. People are asking me, and I'm like, I don't know. Um, but I'm <laughs> curious, tell us more about your book. You started to share with us about your book, but can you tell us a little bit more about your new book? Yeah, so um, this is a topic for another day, but um, I need to write up a whole, a whole thing about the experience of actually publishing a book. I was contacted a year and a half ago by a publisher called Hatherly Press. Um, they are a fitness publisher, and speaking of grow, rowing, growing, they were interested in um, putting out a book of rowing workouts. They found us online, and they said, would you guys be interested in putting together a book of your 101 best rowing workouts? So 
Um, I said, of course, and um, got to work pouring through the hundreds of workouts that I have in a file um, at my house that are mine and my former business partners. And then I also got to pull in all of our master instructors into um, giving me their favorite workouts. So um, it's a great book. It's got 10 chapters, 10 workouts in each chapter. There are different lengths of workouts, different types of workouts, um, different goals of workouts, like there are weight loss workouts and stuff like that. If you can't find one rowing workout that you would want to try either for yourself or with one of your clients, then in this book, then honestly, I don't think rowing's for you. <laughs> <laughs> Out okay. now on Amazon and everywhere else. Cool. <laughs> right. We'll definitely link that up in the show show notes. So thanks so much, Sarah, for joining me today. I'm oh, really thank you. It was the best. I had so much fun. Thanks so much for hanging out with us today. If you like this video, go ahead, hit like, hit subscribe, and chances are your friends will too. So share this video with your friends, and I'll see you on the next video.